Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Athenaeum Mystic Library. As you can see there are quite a few things out on the table, but this is actually a rather light game for experienced players. It's also not very long, so this could be one of those games that's suitable to introduce to friends who aren't very familiar with board games in general. In case you do that, send them this video to let me explain it for you. That's what I'm here for. Here's how you play the game. You are going to play 10 rounds. And then the game is over. Whoever has the most points is the winner. You get some of your points during the game and some of the points at the end when there is a bonus scoring. I'll get to that later. But again, it's 10 rounds and then it ends. Most points wins the game. I'll first explain a round. Every round has five steps. Step one. You have cards. Look at your cards and pick one to keep. Place it face down on the table and give the rest of the cards face down to another player. Step 2. Reveal your card and take everything you're supposed to take. It's like getting income. Step 3. Place the things that you have just received on your board. Step 4. Look at the cards on the main board. That's this board. This is your own bookcase and this is the main board for everyone. Is there anything in your own bookcase that perfectly matches something shown on these cards? If so, place one of your magic wands on that card and immediately take the reward. Step 5. Slide these cards on the main board one space to the right. This one falls off and goes on the discard pile. And this empty space gets filled up by a new card from this deck. That's it. This is how you play Athenaeum Mystic Library. You do this 10 times and then the game is over. I'll explain that again step by step and go more into detail. Before I do that I would like to tell you in this game you don't really get your own turn. You basically all do the same thing together with all the players. You all do step 1 and then you all do step 2 and so on. So when you play this game, make sure to keep an eye on the other players and engage with each other a bit. Let's go again. Step 1. You pick a card from your hand and give the rest to another player. The first important detail is that you start the game using cards with the big A on it. You use these cards for five rounds and then you play the second part of the game using cards that have the big B on it. These ones. Simple. Start the game with A and then later comes B. So you have these cards in your hand and you have to pick one. How do you choose? Let's have a look at a card. Every card has three spaces. This one on the left, this one on the right, and this big one at the bottom. This is what you will give to yourself. That's what you're going to take. And this on the left is what the player on your left will be allowed to take from the supply. And this thing on the right is what the player on the right will get. This is for you, this is for the player on the left, and this is for the player on the right. Keep all of this in mind when you choose a card. 
When you've made your choice, you place it face down in front of you, and the rest goes face down to another player. If you are playing with cards with the A on it, you give it to the left. If you are playing with cards with the B on it, you give it to the right. Step 2. Reveal your cards and take everything you're supposed to take. Like I said, you get whatever it says in the big space on your own card. And what's on the left goes to the player on the left. What's on the right is for the player on the right. But of course, everyone has played cards, so now you get one thing from the player to your left and one thing from the player to your right. You, you don't, the players don't give it to you. It's something that you take from the supply. You get things from their cards as well. I'm not going to explain all the things that are on the cards. The rulebook shows big pictures for all that. and You can look it up really easily if you don't understand what it means. You can get books. You can get magic wands. You can get these side shelves to put up against your own bookcase. You can get points. And you can get an action that lets you take out some books and place them somewhere else. So again... Reveal your cards and take everything you're supposed to take. One thing for yourself and one thing that you get from the player on the left's card and one thing that you get from the card from the right player. So three things in total. Step 3. Start using the things that you just received. You can do that in any order you like. For example, if you are allowed to reshelve three books, you can do that now, before you put new books on the shelf. Maybe you can grab a token from the back. You can do that before or after. It's up to you. You also don't have to use everything that's been given to you. It will be discarded at the end of the round if you didn't use it. But when you do all of this, look at these cards. Because you're trying to make things look exactly the way they look on these cards. That's what gives you points. And most points wins the game. So keep looking at these objective cards and try to do what they are asking for. Again, you take things that you get from the cards, items or actions, and then you spend them in any order you like. Step 4. Look at the objective cards on the main board and see if you have anything that perfectly matches on your own bookcase. It really has to be an exact match. The colors have to match, the positions have to match. If you have found one or more things that are a match, you place one of your magic wands on that card, and then you get the points. If you don't put a magic wand on it, you can't take the points. If you don't have a magic wand, make sure to get one in the next turn. Once you've put your wand on an objective card, you cannot put one of your magic wands on it again. Other players can do that, but not you. You can only score points once per card. I have an example for you. This card says, I need to have three books next to each other. Not just any three books, specifically these books in these three colors, and they also need to be in this order. If I look at my bookcase, I see that somewhere in it, I actually have that exact match. I have this combination 100%. So, I take one of my magic wands and place it on this card. It says I get three points for that. So, 
I go forward three spaces on the scoring track here. If I have another match with another card, I can also do that one, as long as it's a perfect match and you still have a magic wand to place on the card. Step 5. Slide all these cards one space to the right. The one that falls off goes onto the discard pile. If there are any magic wands on that card, put them back into the supply. You don't get them back. And then you go again. You fill this empty space on the left with a new card from this deck. And back to step one. If you only have one card with the letter A on it left, discard it and all the other cards, clean it up. You have to move on to the B cards. Everyone gets six cards. You only use five, but you get six. And then if you only have one B card left, that means it's the end of the game. Very quickly, step one. Pick one card and give the rest to another player, all face down. Step two. Reveal the cards and take what you get. One from yourself, one from the left player, and one from the right player. Step 3. Use the things that you have just received. Step 4. Do you meet any of the requirements of the objective cards? If so, put a 1 on it and get the points. Step 5. Slide these cards and take out a new one. I've got some details for you later, but now I'd like to tell you what bonus points you get at the end of the game. When you've had 10 rounds, the game is over. 5 rounds with cards A and 5 rounds with cards B. What do you get points for now? Most of it is very easy. 1. You get one point for every magic wand that you still have because you didn't use it. 2. If you placed any candles on top of your bookcases during the game, you now get points for that. The points are written right under the candle. See here? I put a candle there and it says 3, so I get three points. You do this for all the candles you have. 3. You see that a bookcase is made up out of different compartments. This one, this, 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 and this. If you have completely filled up one compartment, every single space has a book in it, like here, you get points for that. Just like with the candles, the points are written next to it. See here? If you completely fill up this one, you get 7 bonus points at the end of the game. And the last one, 4. You get bonus points for this. It's a tiny bit more complicated than the rest. Look at your own bookcase. In the top right corner, it shows a color. For example, this one shows pink. That means you are player pink. You have the pink uh, player token and the pink magic wands. All the other players have the other colors. Only you are pink. That means that at the end of the game, you get points for pink books. But it's not as simple as one point for every pink book, you have to try a little harder. You get one point for a pink book if it is touching another pink book. So two pink books right next to each other gives you two points. Let me show you. I will put two pink books here. Three here. One pink book here, and two pink books here. Let's count the points. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. Seven bonus points at the end of the game for your pink books. This one gets no points because it's not touching another pink book. But all the other ones are, so then you get points per book. Let me repeat all of that for you. At the end of the game you get bonus points for... Magic Wands. One point for every magic wand you have left. Points for every candle on your bookcase. The points are written under it. Points for compartments that are completely filled up. The points are written next to it. And points of your oh, for the books of your own colour that are touching each other. Then you get one point per book. That's it. This is how you play Athenea Mystic Library. I've got some details for you that I have to explain, and then we're done. The tiles from the back. Simple detail. When you grab a tile, you don't know what you're going to get, but at least you can always choose which side of the tile you want to use. Every single tile from the back has a candle on one side and something else on the other side. Candle or the other thing, you choose what you want. Next, spider tokens. You start the game with a little friendly spider in every compartment of your bookcase. One here, one here, and so on. As soon as you completely fill up a compartment, you remove the spider token permanently and you get a bonus prize for that. What you get is written here on the main game board. Have a look. Here it shows the spider and what you get. You can choose between getting one magic wand, one tile from the bag, one book, you can choose which color, or one side shelf that you can put on the left or the right of your bookcase. You can uh, have only one side shelf on each side, no more. And the last thing for me to explain, how do you place the books? Because there are rules for this. Rule number one, when you place a book, it always has to be supported on at least one side. In other words, you can't just put a book in the middle here. You have to either place it against the side, left or right, or you have to place it against another book. Rule number two. These may be magical books, but they can't fly, so if you want to get a book on a higher position, you can only put it there if there's another book underneath it. So you can't place it like this. You first have to put a book here, and then you can place this one on top of it. And again, rule number one. If you have these two on the bottom, you can't place this one on the top here, because it has to be supported on one side, so you have to place it here, against the side. And then you can place a book here next time. Rule number three. When you're playing the game, and you're allowed to reorganize the shelves, stick to rules one and two. You can't take out this book and leave this one floating. If you want this one out, first remove this one, on top, and then you can remove the bottom one. Mischief managed. We are done. You now know everything there is to play Athenaeum Mystic Library. I hope you feel you are ready to give it a go, and that you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and see you for the next one.